Hello, BookTube. Well, that melancholy day has arrived at last. <laughs> Today is the last day of the new BookTube event, June on the Range, which was created by Michael K. Vaughn, and I am one of the posse of co-hosts, and the event is designed to celebrate Westerns, Western novels, Western short stories, uh, both as a doff of the sombrero <laughs> to the fact that Westerns once dominated the literary world, and because it's a whole genre of fiction that a lot of people have not explored. It, myself included. I've read it before June on the Range started. I'd read a huge number of westerns, but nowhere near the amount that's out there. I'd left whole authors unexplored, uh, and I still have plenty of authors to explore. But I've been watching everyone do their their wrap ups of June on the Range. It ends today. It's been a wonderful success. If, it, judging just by the emails that I myself have received, it's been a wonderful success. Pe people, not only reading a bunch of books that they ended up really enjoying or maybe not liking. There have been a couple of, of stubborn holdouts read by Fred, had bad reading experiences and doesn't think he'll go back to Westerns. Uh, but on the whole, people have enjoyed the Westerns that they've encountered. And also I've been receiving emails from plenty of people who not only enjoyed what they've been reading, but have felt like a piece of their own personal life was restored to the jigsaw puzzle. Ah, this is what my father would stay up reading long after the hullabaloo of the day was over. Ah, these are the things my grandfather, I would always see him in his chair reading. And my parents told me, you know, don't bother him when he's reading these. And these are what he was reading. That's been wonderful and really touching to read. Uh, and I, true to form, read Westerns last night uh, to sort of say goodbye. I'm not going to read any Westerns uh, for the rest of the year, I don't think. Uh, because there's lots of other booktube events coming up with lots of other kinds of reading. But I wanted to give you one last progress report on the westerns that I read. I read two books that fall under the heading of June on the Range. Uh, and the first one... Uh, the first one was bad, and it was intensely confusing. <laughs> it's called Riders of Death, and it's by Lee Florin. And it, it, it's the story of... Uh, two men who are making their way to a, a, a desolate and seemingly unpromising piece of land called Wolf Basin Ridge, or Wolf Ridge Basin, or something like that. And there's, there's a homesteader there who's asked them for help, and they get there just in time to watch the guy get wounded by people who are trying to rob him. And so there's action right away, right out of the gate, and then they go to the nearest town, and the town is, is overseen by a bad guy, just a one-dimensional villain. They go to the town in order to get their friend medical help. But that that enmeshes them right away in yet more violence because there's something going on uh, with Wolf Ridge Basin. Something is going on here that has a lot more to do with just the meager proceeds of their friend's farm. That doesn't seem like enough to excite the interest and the greed and the territoriality of so many different people. The bad guy in the town, various bandits, a surprise villain, who shows up two-thirds of the way through and steals the show. And eventually, in the course of the novel, it, it, you figure out, you, it, becomes, it becomes clear why this particular patch of ground is so coveted by so many people. You don't know that at the beginning. You don't know that for a, a chunk of the book. You're left guessing what's going on here. And it's not what, it's not what I expected. Uh, but that's not, you know, it was a by-the-numbers shoot 'em up Western novel. It was uh, wooden mechanical, boring except during the shootouts, uh, predictable except for the big reveal and maybe that villain, uh, maybe that extra character at the end, maybe I, maybe I didn't see that coming or anything like it. But nothing, nothing remarkable, certainly nothing moving or human like some of the best westerns that I've read uh, this month have been. But that wasn't the confusing thing about this book. Confusing it was the author, Lee Florin. Because it turns out that Lee, Florin, Lee Florin's birth certificate uh, had a name on it that was a pseudonym. And that pseudonym was for a much earlier writer, a late 19th century, early 20th century writer of Westerns who wrote 1500 Westerns and who went by the name of, of Mr. Brack. Uh, and Mr. Brack wrote Western novels until well into the middle of the, the 20th century and decided at one point to try his hand at a different kind of writing, so he wrote a short story of science fiction under a pseudonym. And the short story was about a group of colonists of an alien planet who figure out a way to genetically engineer fire-breathing dragons. The story was called Dragonflight, and Mr. Brack wrote it under the name of Anne McCaffrey. And uh, the publisher loved it, the readers loved it, 
So Mr. Brack, writing as Anne McCaffrey, expanded into a novel called Dragonflight and then into a whole bunch, a whole series of books called The Dragon Riders of Pern. And those novels were so successful that they allowed Anne McCaffrey to buy her own island. And uh, when she died, people looking into her last will and testament realized that the deed to the castle, which she bought and erected, she erected a home on this island that she owned, but the deed to it all was in the name of someone called Lord Dunsany, who was a late 19th century Irish author of fantasy novels and dramas that were poorly received. Uh, and it turns out that Lord Dunsany in the 19th century grew tired of writing books like The King of Elfland's Daughter and wrote Western novels, uh, but he wanted to have a fantasy element involved in those Western novels, so he gave a Western backdrop to quite a few things where he added fantasy elements from the latest findings of the natural sciences. And you may be familiar with some of those novels because they starred John Carter, who was a Confederate soldier who was transported mystically to the planet Mars. And uh, Lord Dunsany wrote those under the pseudonym of Edgar Rice Burroughs. And I learned all of that by doing even a quick Google search of Lee Florent, uh, who wrote, I think, 1,500 novels under 1,500 different pseudonyms. So by the time I'd circled all the way back to Lee Florin in my Googling research, uh, I felt like I had had a seriously bad acid trip. So I'm finishing out June on the Range with the apotheosis of a, a, a process that we've talked about a few times during the month, which is writers who wrote an enormous number of books, including rewriting their own books, including rewriting their own books under pseudonyms. Many different pseudonyms. <laughs> it turns out that Lee Florin, whoever Lee Florin was, was the apotheosis of that process. No one knows who this writer was, when this writer was born, when they died, how much they wrote, and under what names. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no wonder this book largely read like it was written by an assembly line. <laughs> so I, I'm ending June on the Range with an author not of a problem that I may never solve. I'm not even going to think about it until next June on the Range. <laughs> but the other book that I read uh, was very different. It was a very different thing. It was a reread, first of all, and it was a total rediscovery. I, I read this years and years, decades ago, and I had an estimate in my mind of what I thought of it, and it's so much better than what I thought. It's this. It's Close Range, Wyoming Stories by Annie Proulx. One of the only women uh, that I've read in June on the Range for June on the Range. The only other one I can think of, aside from romance authors, and we've sort of determined that romance westerns are not westerns. The only one I can think of is something I didn't know at the time. A lot of you had to inform me that the uh, assistant to William Johnstone that co-wrote, or I suspect wrote, the later book of his that I read just the other day was in fact a niece. Did not know that. I think, I think probably the publishers told her, or maybe she told them. Let's just use my initials. It might hurt our sales if, if the dyed-in-the-wool traditional fans of Westerns knew that a woman was writing this. I'd hate to think if that's the reasoning. I bet I know some readers where that would be true. Uh, but this, this is a collection of short stories set in relatively contemporary 20th century Wyoming. Uh, so you would think that it would fall outside the bounds of a normal Western the same way that, that contemporary Western romances would. But oh my god, these things are so good. <laughs> so good. The collection is famous for Brokeback Mountain. The short story Brokeback Mountain is in this collection. But I remember reading Brokeback Mountain in The New Yorker when it came out, and I also read uh, The Mud Beneath, which is what I consider to be the real standout story in this collection, a story about a, a bull rider, about a rodeo rider, that is just amazing. And I'd forgotten how powerful it was and how beautifully written so many of these things are. So many of them. It, it, this is a short story collection that falls under the shadow of its one standout table of contents item. And that's not fair. This was enrapturing from beginning to end. Even the weakest stories in here are just have long, beautiful excursions about the natural world. I, I've always been... A, impressed by this author, but good God, am I so glad that I reread this for June on the Range. So you can imagine my surprise. Uh, when I got, I got to the end of this collection, I thought it was just fantastic. And then I had a fugitive thought uh, that I've, I've reviewed Annie Proulx. I reviewed Barkskins. And I couldn't off the top of my head remember who I reviewed it for. So I started doing a little Googling to find out, and in the course of that Googling, it turned out Annie Proulx is Lee Florin. <laughs> who knew? <laughs> 
So, uh, that is my hallucinatory end to June on the Range, is that, is that my knowledge of the quantum slipstream drive has been thrown completely into doubt by Lee Florin, who, as far as I know, not only wrote all of these books behind me that you see, but my latest review. <laughs> Have I been reviewing Lee Florin all along? I don't know. I <laughs> have no idea. So, so June on the Range ends for me uh, in a barbaric yawp of sheer confusion. <laughs> so I'm sure that Michael K. Vaughn is happy. <laughs> so we move on. We say goodbye as June on the Range rides into the sunset. We say goodbye to a wonderful booktube event, a booktube event that was by any measure a success. It made people read new things. It made people read reread old things with fresh eyes. It brought all sorts of fans to an, uh, an old and now neglected genre. People had a lot of fun. Added a lot of favorite authors. I did. I, I added authors that I will definitely look at again. I just didn't know when I was looking at most of June on the Range that all of those authors are, in fact, Lee Florin. I had no idea. It makes things much easier. <laughs> so that's June on the Range for 2022. And we move on. July is tomorrow. So we move on to Jane Austen July and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, so we'll have plenty of update videos, but no more Westerns. So feel free. Feel free to tell. I mean, a lot of you have been emailing me anyway about this event. That's been one of my favorite parts. But feel free to tell me, either in the comments or in an email, how your tune on the range went. You know, how, how did you wrap things up? That, I'd, I'd love to hear it. That's that it, when it, when a booktube event strikes personal chords like that. That's when you know that it was a success. That's when you know that it worked. Uh, so. Feel free to let me know. That is the end for June on the Range. What fun. Uh, and we'll move on to July tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.